affordable rear-wheel drive sports cars draw in enthusiasts like moths to a flame. Who doesn't want a drift-happy track day star on a budget? But for a long time, car manufacturers weren't selling too many vehicles that met that criteria, especially if you were focused on the affordability part. Now though, there's the Toyota 86. Okay, so it's not actually a new car per se. This car was on sale for a couple of years already as the Scion FRS, even though in other countries it was already called 86 or GT86. But now that the Scion brand is going away, Toyota has to rename it. And at the same time, the company took the opportunity to update its little sports coupe. So the engine and suspension have been retuned and it looks different inside and out. But the good news, it's still a blast to drive. How does it look? I've always liked the design of the Toyota 86, even when it was a Scion, or even when it sold as its platform mate, the Subaru BRZ. The classic coupe shape with the low hood and wheels pushed to the corners is fantastic. Now, the refresh for 2017 didn't appeal to me that much when I saw it in photos, but in person, I love it. All the exterior lights are LEDs, the fascia is way more aggressive, the dual exhaust still looks super cool. This is a sporty, racy looking car that just looks awesome. How's the storage? This is a small sports car, so unsurprisingly, the trunk is tiny. Now, there is more storage space than in, say, an MX-5 Miata, but it's really cramped back there. The good news is you can fold down the rear seats to get more space, so you could, say, squeeze a bike in there. And in fact, the design spec for this car called for it to be able to fit four wheels and tires and a jack with the back seat folded down. The idea being that you could take all that stuff with you to a track day. Storage in the cabin isn't much better than the trunk. The glove box is really small and storage in the center console where the cup holders are isn't great. If you don't have any passengers, your best bet is probably to just use the rear seats as a storage shelf. Is it roomy? Space is actually fine for the driver and passenger and because there's no sunroof, headroom is pretty good. But the rear seats, well, they're really best for backpacks or small children. Anytime I've carried adult passengers in the back seat of one of these cars, they've been miserable. Headroom is abysmal, and most of all, there's pretty much zero legroom with the front seats adjusted so the driver can actually drive. How does the interior feel? One of the things I love about the interior of this car is the seating position. How easy it is to reach the steering wheel and the pedals and the shifter, the position of the instruments. It's just so good for driving. And the seat is the same thing. It's really snug and holds me in place without being uncomfortable. Changes for this year inside the car primarily are the steering wheel is slightly smaller. It feels great in my hands, I love it. And we've got a lot of this suede-like Grand Lux material, which just feels and looks a little nicer than the plastic that were in there before. Speaking of plastics, not every touch point or control in here is the nicest that you can possibly find, but that's really okay. You don't buy this car expecting it to be a Lexus. You buy it because of how it drives. So I can forgive a lot of these controls inside. Is it well equipped? Uh, no. This is a car about back to basics, distraction-free driving purity, so there's not a lot of extra stuff. Standard features include a backup camera, keyless entry, and LED lights all around. But let's talk about stuff you can't get. No power seats, no heated seats, no leather, no push button start, no automatic climate control, no satellite radio, no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. This car is about driving, not gadgets. How's the infotainment system? In two words, not good. It has Bluetooth and USB and auxiliary inputs, no CD player of course, but that's about it. Navigation is a $900 dealer option. The touchscreen display and the interface are really pretty crummy and the audio quality is flat and tinny. The good news is that this is a standard double DIN format radio, so it would be really easy to swap it in for an aftermarket unit. But that's not a step everyone wants to perform on their brand new car. Is it a good daily driver?
One of the many suspension changes this year involves softer rear springs and retuned dampers, and what that did for ride quality is improve it dramatically. Uh, the car's still pretty stiff, but compared to the way the old Scion FRS bounced and banged over potholes and rough roads, this car's so much more pleasant and comfortable. At the same time, it is still a sports car, so it's really loud all the time. You hear everything, especially on the highway. Visibility is also not great with the low coupe roof line. There's a backup camera, which is really helpful, but sometimes looking over my shoulder to change lanes, I hate how big the blind spots are. Is it fun to drive? Under the hood is the same 2.0-litre flat four engine as before, but it's got a lot of revisions for this year. The short version is that you get 5 extra horsepower for a total of 205, and the final drive ratio in the manual transmission version is shorter to make acceleration just that little bit sprightlier. This engine is still a joy when you rev it out. There's so much power and it sounds great. Don't listen to anyone who says this car needs a turbo. It's plenty quick for this type of car. But, as ever, you kind of need to really ring this car out to get the most of it. When you just drive around at 3,000 RPM, it feels like it has 145 horsepower, not 205. The thing is, this car isn't just about horsepower or straight-line performance. It's really about being fun to drive in any situation. It's still a really grippy, nimble, taut car. I have a ton of fun throwing this car around. Yes, just like before, it'll drift and slide around, but it's perhaps not quite so unpredictable as the old Scion FRS was. The steering is still really great. Turning is ridiculously sharp when you just go and change lanes or dart around a turn. It's fantastic. How's the fuel economy? Fuel efficiency ratings are down a little bit for the 2017-86 compared to the FRS to 21 miles per gallon city and 28 mpg highway with the manual, and it does require premium gas. If you get the automatic transmission, those figures rise to 24 and 32 miles per gallon. That's kind of the only reason to even consider getting the automatic in this car. How much is it? Here's the best news of all. The Toyota 86 costs $27,120. That's cheap. Like, really cheap for a sports car. There aren't any factory option packages either, so you can get this rear drive coupe all in for less than you might spend on a much more boring car like a Camry or an Accord. You can, of course, pay extra for TRD branded dealer accessories like new springs, wheels, and an exhaust, but otherwise this car comes in one simple trim level. What are the negatives? Fuel economy isn't great. The interior is cramped, the trunk is small, it's really loud, and there isn't much equipment available. It's also worth remembering that this car's twin, the Subaru BRZ, offers way more optional features. And it even has a performance pack that has different wheels and brakes and dampers, all of which might appeal way more to a really performance-focused driver. Who should buy it? Do you like driving? As in, do you really love fun-to-drive cars that you can take to back roads or track days at the weekend? Well, the Toyota 86 nails all that without breaking the budget. For less than $30,000, you can have a really fun-to-drive sports coupe with a high revving engine, nimble handling, and aggressive styling. It's a really good deal. On a crisp fall day like today, I'm really glad I'm wearing this Lotus hoodie from Motorstore.com. It and the t-shirt I'm wearing are available through our sister site, Motorstore, where you can find all sorts of branded apparel, from hats and hoodies to jackets and t-shirts for all your favorite car manufacturers, racing drivers, and more. Check it out now at Motorstore.com.